and I found that this can be really daunting if English isn't your first language. Hey sailors, welcome back to Cruising as Crew, my name is Lucy and today we're going to be talking about how to protect your mental well-being when you are working on board a cruise ship and a little bit about mental health as well and what support is there on a cruise ship for you. But before we get started, please like and subscribe for more cruise ship content and if you have any video suggestions or questions, you can leave them in the comments down below or DM me over on Instagram at cruising as crew. But as for now, let's get into the video. So when you're working on a cruise ship, you are going to be away from your loved ones and it's going to be hard to keep in contact with them. Maybe because of the hours that you're working, you might be in a completely different time zone. When I went on my first ship, it was in Australia, the other side of the world to the UK. So that made it really hard to call my mom and my dad because you know, when I was waking up, they were going to bed. You're gonna be living in a small cabin with a complete stranger. Obviously at first, they will become your friend, hopefully. You're gonna be living on a ship. You might be at sea to like three to four days without seeing land. Now, these things like <laughs> make it sound awful. You know I love cruising, you know I love working on cruise ships, but these are things that can affect your mental well-being if you're not prepared for them. Cruise lines have got a lot better in making crew members' mental health more of a priority. And nowadays, there really is quite a lot of support for crew members. There's always gonna be someone to talk to. There's usually a counselor on board or a HR representative on board that you can go to if you need to talk to someone because it is huge. Like you are, especially if it's your first cruise ship experience you are going from living on land to living on a cruise ship working more hours than you've ever worked before being away from home like it's a massive adjustment and it really can well you are I mean you are going to have days where you feel low but then it can tip into actually I'm pretty low all of the time and if that's the case then there are people you can talk to about it but there is only so much that a company can do for you if you're not looking after you you have to look after you. That's what we're gonna go through today. We're gonna be going through some things that you absolutely need to do to look after you. And you know, to keep yourself in check so that you don't go down that rabbit hole of, oh my God, I feel really low every single day. Like I said, you are gonna have the odd day. It's human nature where you're like, oh, I just wanna go home. But the majority of days should be happy and you should be loving it. It's an incredible experience. But if you don't do the things I'm gonna mention, then yeah, you do run the risk of it tipping into depression or, you know, worse. The first thing I wanna mention, people are not mind readers. I know. If you say you're okay, people are gonna assume that you're okay. And it isn't their job to question your answer. So if you're going through a spell where you're having a really hard time, don't be thinking, oh, no one cares. No one would listen to me. Having this expectation that, well, surely people can tell that I'm having a hard time. No, you might be a lot better at hiding your true feelings than you think you are. And even if you're not, and it is clear that you're having a bad time, if you don't bring it up, people are like, well, they obviously haven't brought it up, so maybe that means they don't wanna talk about it. But also people are just wrapped up in themselves. People are selfish and everyone has stuff going on within their own lives. So it is very important that if you are having a hard time or you're having an issue, you need to speak up. You can't wait for people to come to you and pander to you. So make sure that you are communicating clearly. Like there, there is always gonna be someone to talk to, but the key word is talk. You have to talk, you have to communicate how you are feeling. It is not everyone else's job to dig and to be like, oh my God, what's wrong? Tell me everything. It's not. You have to be upfront with your feelings. The second thing is you need to get out. There's a lot of crew members on board who literally just work and sleep, work and sleep, work and sleep, work and sleep. Occasionally you'll see them at crew bar, but like they never get off the ship. It was one of my friends, Raul was, he was like, oh, I'm just so low. And I'm like, well, yeah, mate. When was the last time you like got off and breathed some fresh air in and you know saw anything other than these walls? And he was like, oh, it's like a good three and a half months since I've got off. I'm like, yeah. Because of his rank on the ship, he wasn't allowed in passenger areas. So he hadn't, it's not like he'd been able to walk on the deck and get some fresh air. I mean, he could have at certain times during the day, but he just chose not to. So he, he hadn't had any fresh air 
for three and a half months which is mind-blowing and I know for a lot of you you're like well I don't need to be told this like I'm gonna be off every chance I get but because you're working a lot you are gonna be tired and there are gonna be days where you just want to sleep that's fine if it's the odd day but if it's like tipping into every single day you're just going to bed going to work going to bed going to work going to bed you're gonna get depressed if you're t sometimes even though you're tired you need to push yourself to even just go out for half an hour go out for an hour go for a walk get some fresh air see a new place i can't tell you the amount of times where i was like i don't want to go out today i just want to sleep and my roommate or someone be like no come on we're going out and i felt so much better for it after even if it was just half an hour or two hours we got a coffee and i came back it just broke up the day so you don't need to go off and spend any money if you're adamant that you're going to save money that's fine it doesn't cost money to get off the ship like I said, you can go for a walk. We're used to going for walks after lockdown, so you can do it. Very important that you're getting fresh air, and I don't think people really understand the importance of getting fresh air in your lungs, because on the cruise ship it is all recycled air. So you really need to get outside. Humans are social creatures. We long for social interaction. On a ship, you are away from your family, you're away from your friends on land. So it is important that you make an effort with these new people that you are surrounded by because they are going to be your second family, especially if you are doing a nine month, 10 month contract. That is a long time. And unfortunately, friendships take effort. Granted, they take a lot less effort on a cruise ship. It's like making friends at school. It's so easy because you're just there. As when you're an adult you've got life that just gets in the way so it's really easy to make friends on board but you still have to put in effort it's so important that we feel like we are connected to people no, and not just like superficial friends i mean like real connections and out of the thousand crew members on board there might only be one person that you create a connection with but that will keep you sane on my first ship a girl called shannon we were literally inseparable if someone saw me without Shannon, they were like, oh my God, where's Shannon? If someone saw Shannon without me, they were like, oh my God, where's Lucy? And I'm not saying you have to have that, but I'm just saying you really need to find your person because when you're having a low day, you, you do need someone to talk to. Yes, as I said, there are people to talk to on board, talk to your manager, talk to HR, talk to the counsellor on board, but sometimes you just want to talk to your mate, you know? Sometimes you don't want it to be this, company thing sometimes you just want to have a chat and i know this sounds really obvious but so but social inclusion needs are so high on our list it's food and shelter social inclusion like it's literally second we need we need social inclusion like just after we need food and shelter so really do not underestimate the power of feeling like you've connected with someone because it really can make or break your contract. When I look back at my contracts, yes, I obviously loved the ship, loved the itinerary, but I remember the people. I remember the amazing times that I had with my friends. You need to make an effort to socialize. And I found that this can be really daunting if English isn't your first language. If you're going on board and um, you're, you're worried because your English is good enough to have passed the tests that you have to pass to get on board, but maybe you're like, well, it's not really good enough to sit you know with an english person and have a full-blown conversation i've spoke to a few people who when they got on board their english wasn't great by the end of their contract they're fluent and then they've been like yeah you know at the beginning of my contract i was getting really down because i didn't feel like i could i could communicate well firstly there's there's always going to be someone that speaks the same language as you i mean like nine times out of ten unless you're from some really remote part of the world but just know that if english isn't your first language it's okay i can't think of a better way to get good at it because you are literally surrounded by it all the time so you are going to pick it up one girl called pie i mean when she came on board she really bless her like her english was there was a, a big communication barrier and by the end of it she was completely fluent like completely fluent as in like she was even thinking in english she was that fluent so be aware that you know it isn't going to be easy when you first get on board if english isn't your first language but there is light at the end of the tunnel you know after a few months you are going to be more fluent and you are going to feel a lot better about being able to communicate with people 
And also, people are so understanding. No one is ever gonna bitch about you because you can't speak good English. Firstly, if you can speak a second language at all, well done. Like, well done. You should be proud of yourself no matter how good at it you are. Like, that's amazing. So if someone is shitting on you for not being fluent, it's like, how many languages can you speak? One? Oh, okay. You know? And it always is. Like, because people who can speak a second language know how hard it is to learn. It's You're never ever gonna find someone who can speak multiple languages who is shitting on you for being bad at your second language. It's always gonna be someone who can only speak one language. So sod them. Don't even listen to them. Exercising. <laughs> I know you don't wanna hear it, but yeah, exercising. Not for keeping fit. I don't care how much you weigh. I don't care what size you are. It's for the endorphins. It's for the happy hormones. <laughs> So yeah, you need to exercise for the endorphins, whether this is a walk, whether you're gonna go to the gym and lift weights, whether you're gonna do a Zumba class, being physical improves your mood. So if you are getting depressed, if you are feeling down, try exercising. And I know you're tired, you lack the motivation, you don't wanna, it's the last thing you wanna do. You don't have to go to the gym. Like I said, you can go out in that beautiful port that you've just docked in and go for a walk along the beach. That sounds nice, but you do need to exercise. Diet, you are what you eat. And the thing is on cruise ships, in the crew mess, you are gonna have everything on offer to you, from salad, to pizza and chips, to curry, to potatoes, to like everything. And it's very easy to make the unhealthy choice. You literally are what you eat. Your food is gonna fuel your body, is gonna affect your hormones. So if you are having burger and chips every day, I mean, you probably will do for like the first week that you're on board because you're like, oh, but after that you should tone it down a little bit and start eating some vegetables. You need to make the right decisions when it comes to your food. What are you putting in your body? You know, if you're not putting anything healthy in you, if you're not getting any vitamins or any goodness, that might be contributing to why you're feeling so low. I know that if I eat bad for a week, I'm moody as hell. I'm not saying you have to, you know, your body is a temple and you have to eat healthy all the time, but you do need to be conscious of it. Like, if you've had burger and chips twice this week, okay, then maybe don't have it for the rest of the week. Like, just chill. Be good to yourself. Eat the right things. If you're gonna have chips, also have some broccoli. You need a why. You need to have a reason why you are away from home. Now, for me, it's the travel and the, the, just the whole experience of being on cruise ships. That is my why. Your why might be, well, I'm doing this because I want to save up because this job on a cruise ship pays more than anything I could do at home. So I'm doing this because I want to save up enough money to buy a house for my family or to buy a house for me. I'm doing this because I'm paying off my debts. But the point is you need a why because you are gonna have days where you're like, why am I here? You know, if you've watched my videos, you know how much I love working on cruise ships. I'm making a bloody YouTube channel about it. Like, I love it. But there are days where you're like, why am I doing this? And if you don't have an answer for that, it can set you off into a little bit of a spiral. Whereas if you have a reason for it's just something to focus on. So that when you're having that really tough day, you can be like, it's all right. Because this is all in service of buying that house becoming the captain, becoming financially independent. I'm seeing the world. Yes, I'm having a hard day, but let's get some perspective. I'm getting paid to travel. So I would definitely think about your why, and you might not know your why until you're on board, and that's absolutely fine, but it will help you when you have your hard days. And then of course, like sleep, you need to make sure that you're getting enough sleep. I'm horrible if I don't have enough sleep. <laughs> And most people are, most people are groggy and grumpy if they don't have enough sleep. So when you first get on board, especially if you're younger, you're gonna be enticed by the crew bar, you're gonna wanna go out and socialize every night and have a few too many, and that's great, but you don't wanna burn out. You need to realize that you do need to rest. It's incredibly important that you get enough sleep. So just like with the eating, just like with going to the gym, you, you are gonna have to be disciplined with yourself sometimes and be like, you know what, I've been out every night this week, maybe I'll give it a rest tonight. Because there's gonna be a party every night. If you miss one or two, it really isn't 
the end of the world. So those are a few things that you need to keep in check in order to keep your mental well-being in check. If you're not getting enough sleep, if you're not eating the right foods, if you're not exercising, if you're not getting out and seeing the ports, if you're not having fresh air, if you're not socialising, then yes, you are going to feel incredibly low. So this is why I say like, yes, the company is there to support you, but you've got to support you. You've got to make sure that you are keeping yourself in check and you are looking after you know, everything you need to look after and making sure that you're good. Now, if you're like, well, I'm sleeping and my diet's fine and I'm socializing and I feel like I've made connections and you've done all these things, but you're still low, it might just be that cruising isn't for you. Like, as in working on cruise ships isn't for you and that's fine. It's such a bizarre world and it's so different to everything that you know on land. It isn't for everyone and there's a lot of people who have come and started work on board cruise ships and after a month they've gone home because they're like, this isn't for me. Or there are people who have just done one contract and been like, okay, I've done it, like, but it's not for me. For some people, I love it. Others, it's not for them and that's fine. But it's really important that you're self-aware and you're, you're like, okay, that's, you know, it's fine. And that can be really hard. If it's something that you have wanted to do for years and let's say you've finished college and everything you've done has been working towards working on a cruise ship and you finally get there and you're like, I hate it. I hate it. Honey, you're not, you won't be the only one. There's a load of people, you know, who went to law school. Everything they've done in their life has been to become a lawyer and they get to being a lawyer and they're like, I don't even like law. I don't want to be a lawyer. I want to be a singer or whatever. It is okay that you don't like working on a cruise ship and you can go home. There are people who you can talk to. You can talk to your manager. If you don't feel like you can talk to your manager, as I said, there are counselors, there is HR, there's a hotel director. Like there's so many people on board who are gonna be there to help you. If you need to go home, they're gonna get you home. Or if there's just maybe some things that you're like, well, if this was different, then, may then I'd feel better. They're gonna be there to help you with that. But you have to be self-aware enough to realize that that is what's going on. And once again, communicate it. If you don't communicate it, that's when bad shit happens. People commit suicide because they don't say anything, because they don't feel like anyone is there to listen. I am here to tell you that there is always going to be someone who will listen and who is going to try and help you. But unless you speak up, they, they aren't going to know that anything is wrong. So you look after you, you make sure that you are keeping yourself in check and doing everything you can to keep yourself happy and healthy. And if you are still not feeling that great, then you need to make some tough decisions. Maybe it's time to go home. Maybe it's time to talk to the HR lady or man and see what they can offer. But anyway, guys, I really hope you have found this video helpful. If you have, and you have any questions on this topic or suggestions, then please leave them in the comments down below. And if you have any video suggestions, or questions you can dm me over on instagram at cruising as crew and i get back to every one of you because i love talking to you so thank you for watching i hope you have a fantastic rest of the day and i will see you in the next video guys bye